you believe it, ladles and jelly spoons. Episode 24 of the hippest video game related podcast. The New York Times called it a timeless classic. Welcome in, but listener, or listeners, if you're listening together as a group, if you are listening as a group, by the way, can I ask that you all play this episode on each of your devices, you know, to boost the audience analytics? Anyway, we're in far too much of a hurry, so do jump in and buckle up. I suppose you want to know what you're listening to. Well, this is the Off The Rails podcast in which I, the off-rail gamer, talk about video games for around half an hour once a fortnight. I'm going to keep the introduction short and sweet, just like me, again this week. I have socials. I have an email address. We have a segment called Listener's Whispers in which I read out your emails as long as they are compliant with my two golden rules. One, keep it clean. Two, don't be mean. If you want your message read out in the next episode, simply ping a message to offrailgamer at gmail.com. I've popped my email address along with links to all my other social media platforms in the podcast episode description, so you can find me everywhere there. But that's enough of the dull stuff. How about I tell you all about what I've been playing recently, eh? That was a rhetorical question. I'm going to tell you all about what I've been playing recently. Last time out, I was telling you that I'd played a little bit of Snufkin, Melody of Moomin Valley. I haven't progressed far into this title yet, but now that it's been out a little while, I feel I can talk about it. Just a bit, at least. You play as Snufkin, who has been out travelling the world through the winter months while his friend, Moomin Troll, has been hibernating. It's now spring, though and you are returning to see your friends in the Moomin Valley, only to find a series of new parks have been built at the cost of the natural environment. That is to say that many trees have been felled, and a load of signs have been put up notifying new rules to be adhered to in and around the parks. Snufkin sets to work tearing down these signs, and notices that once they are all removed and there are no rules posted anymore, the police patrolling the parks think there's no rule left for them to uphold and so they abandon their posts. What follows is a cutscene of Snufkin dismantling the parks and nature returning to its former glory. There are other things to do in the game, like helping the residents and fauna of Moomin Valley. This is a music adventure game, and Snufkin plays his harmonica or flute. I'm yet to pick up a drum at some point. But what's this? Moomin Troll is missing, and it seems he's been taken by a groak. The Groak turns everything around it frosty, and when you encounter it yourself, all you can hope to do is outrun it. Do this, and you'll come across a site where a new park is under construction and being guarded by two careless police officers who start a forest fire by accident. Thankfully, the Groak can put the fires out, and also scares the police away. This isn't as far as I've got so far, but I don't want to spoil too much. So, I'm going to talk about something else instead. And that instead is the Star Wars Battlefront Classics Collection. This is a remaster of the two Star Wars Battlefront games from the PS2 stroke original Xbox era. I absolutely loved these games back in the day and have really enjoyed getting back into them again. Now, what I will say is that the two of them looked fantastic way back when, so I can't say the remasters have given them a massive graphical makeover or anything, but I'm sure they've added in a few extras, like more vehicles perhaps. There's also meant to be online play with up to 64 online players. So far, there only seem to be three active servers, and I'm yet to suss out LAN games. Hopefully these issues will get fixed soon, but given I've never really been into online gaming, it's really not a feature that I'm personally desperate to see anyway. I've been playing a fair amount of Arcade Paradise, an indie title in which you go to work for your father's laundrette, and over time slowly convert it into a games arcade. 
It's a really addictive experience and you can also play the games that you buy to install in-game. I can't think of too much else to say about these games I've been playing recently, so instead, let's get back to talking about the games I played a long time ago on the Game Boy, when I was still just a supple young boy. Oh no, the princess has been kidnapped. Maybe Peach, maybe one of the others. Her captor, a massive gorilla called King... Uh, no, wait, that should be um, Donkey Kong. Now, in the original, I believe it was Jumpman who went in pursuit of our primate villain, though for this talk, I will be calling him Mario. In the Game Boy version, I think it had been updated to be Mario anyway. You start off scaling scaffolding while Donkey throws oil drums at you. You can either jump over these or break them with a sledgehammer that you can temporarily pick up. Climb to the top and save the... Wait, Donkey, where are you taking the princess now? In most of the following levels, Donkey Kong runs off with the princess over his shoulder and locks themselves away behind a small door. Mario must platform through the levels to find the key and bring it to said door to progress. Sometimes, Mario must even trapeze his way to higher platforms, swinging around a parallel bar like a gymnast to get the extra height. You'll run through jungles, busy cities, and even across a sailing ship, all in the attempt to catch Donkey Kong and put an end to this tomfoolery. Now put the princess down, will you, you big oaf? Changing the subject now, the next game that I want to talk about is B-Rally on the Game Boy. You could pick one of four cars in this game, a Peugeot, a Ford Escort, a Mitsubishi, Mitsubishi, one of them anyway, or the iconic Subaru. You'll race around the world in iconic locations such as Greece, Italy, Corsica and the United Kingdom. It's kind of a 2D from behind the car view, playing out kind of similarly to the Road Rash games I've talked about and even played over on YouTube previously. Only being on Game Boy, this one is pretty monochrome. You know what? I think Road Rash did get a release on Game Boy, but I've never had it in my collection, so I can't be talking about it today. Just be careful in B-Rally as there are oil spills, road closure barriers and even boulders littering the roads, which you'll want to avoid or else find yourself parking your motor on its roof and losing valuable seconds against your opponents. You can also, I'm fairly certain, race time trials, like you can in most racing games. But why would you do that to yourself? Come on, you're really not such a bad person, so please don't feel like you have to put yourself through that. In Worms, you control an army of, well, worms of course, don't you? This is classic Worms with the 2D side-on view of the landscape. They've included all your favourite weapons, including bazookas, homing missiles, grenades, cluster bombs, shotguns, Uzis, dynamite, exploding sheep, banana bombs. Kamikaze! You know Worms, and I played it first on the Game Boy, then on the PlayStation, and just recently I even picked it up for the Mega Drive. But it's the Game Boy that I'm talking about today. I don't know if you could play against friends on separate devices using the link cable, I remember the first time I saw it, a couple of my cousins were passing their Game Boy back and forth at the end of their turn. It was definitely neat having a multiplayer game for the system, as most cartridges were for one player only, really. Unless you're using homing missiles and airstrikes, or going in for up-close and personal attacks, it can be very challenging trying to land a grenade or bazooka shell near your opponents, and you have to keep an eye on the wind speed and direction to see which way it might carry your shot. It's always satisfying when you do land a direct hit though, or even send your enemy flying into the water for an immediate death. I wonder if they're related to John Marston. In Game & Watch Gallery, you play as Yoshi or the Mario Brothers trying out different careers. In Manhole, Yoshi tries to support all the manhole covers as an army of careless toads prances across them, totally oblivious to the potential harm they'll meet if they should fall. In Fire, the castle is on fire, 
and Mario and Luigi, carrying a stretcher between them, aim to break the fall of Toads, Yoshis and Baby Donkey Kongs, whilst trying to bounce them into the safety of a carriage. Just don't catch the bob as they only spell trouble. In Octopus, Mario dons his deep-sea diving gear to explore Davy Jones's locker and steal treasure from an aggressive cephalopod. The more treasure you try to take at once, the slower Mario will move as he gets more and more weighed down. You'll want to avoid the octopus's tentacles and ink attacks if you want to avoid seeing the two dreaded words, Game Over. Finally, in Oil Panic, Mario has spotted an oil leak caused by Bower who sits atop the castle. You catch drops of oil and pass them to Yoshi below, who will catch the oil in his mouth and then spit a fireball. Feed Yoshi six drops at once and he'll build a block, and build three blocks, and Yoshi will climb them, eat a watermelon, and spit the seeds at Bowser. And now it's time for the last game in our list, Lemmings. Lemmings is a puzzle game in which you must guide our friends through the level to the exit. If you visit my YouTube channel, you'll find I played a game called Tin Hearts around Christmas time, which is very similar. You can get your lemmings to blow themselves up to remove obstacles, give them the ability to climb and then hand them an umbrella they can use, kind of Mary Poppins style, as a parachute, or get them to dig their way to freedom. It's a beautiful little puzzle game with a great soundtrack. It's challenging in parts, but I loved this game as a kid. And there is not the complete list of games I owned on the Game Boy, but a good varied selection from them. What were your favourite games on Nintendo's first handheld? Drop me an email to let me know. Otherwise, it's a shorter episode this week, but I'll catch you in two weeks' time. Bye for now!